Can you beat on a mate solo? Welcome to Act 3 in the finale of the series, where Shadowheart takes on the hardest difficulty in Bald Escape 3 all by herself. In this episode, we'll take on the most challenging bosses. Was that 140 damage in one arrow? Join me on my adventure to see how I take on Act 3 using God's favorite printers. That's a cute face, I missed it so much. Our act free adventure starts off at Rivington. I can't believe this homeless child interrupted us. I can't find my mum. Get lost, kid, not my problem. Um. This next part involves super exciting shopping. So please stick with me as it provides context. Our first stomp was to see Boney. We spent 5,000 gold for a statue, goddamn. But somehow managed to make that back by selling some armors. Next, I put on the gloves of favoury for a vantage on slider hand janks, stealing as many arrows as I can from the Rivington in general. So the most important arrows are the arrow mini targets. Dragon slaying arrows will need at least five for one turn answer. Okay, a little bit of cheeky foreshadowing. I might have done over 800 damage in one turn this playthrough. I skipped the still watcher checkpoint by flying to the Swardian, stopping by Danfalons for a few items. The elixir of cloud giant string, which sets your strength to 27, which is huge with the time string. The oil of accuracy adds plus two to our attack rolls. I bought a fiend slaying arrow for Raphael. And lastly, the cloak of displacement. At the beginning of the wearer's turn, the cloak activates, granting enemies disadvantage on attack rolls. This lasts until you take damage, deciding to long rest for the night. Shadowheart contemplated being Shah's right hand, whilst bearing a wound on her own hand. She very well knows that Mother Superior must be purged. We've got a statue in camp now of Shadow Cutie, you know, with the dog tear and everything. The statue grants a 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. That's so awesome because it's permanent now. Shares's caress was our next stomp. And no, it's not what you think. It's even better. So we're gonna fight this mind player here. Yo, what the hell was that? You have one word. Tell me, what will you be? Shadow Cutie will be very powerful this playthrough. You are more than powerful. We got a buff called Rapture. It gives us a 1d6 bonus to attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. This lasts until the next long rest, which is good because we're not going to rest anymore. He needs a city pass when he can just fly past the branch. Our first stop in the lower city was at the Wine Festival. So here's my trick for Korra. I'm going to use an Arrow of Darkness and as soon as I shoot it, I'm going to go into turn base with shift and spacebar. So I'm in the cloud now. I'm going to switch to melee and stab her. This starts the unholy assassin quest line. Old mate shows up and tells us we must murder once more and remove our victim's hand. Another stop I like to do is here for the many arrows or many targets. Same trick your arrow of darkness and grab the arrows because they're free now. A quick shopper fits for some arrows. Did you know the arrow of undead slaying works on answer as well? Is that two girls are great or his? I went to Devil's Phoenix skipping straight to the second floor by just flying to the balcony. In this chest is the Mask of Soul Perception. You gain a plus two bonus to attack rolls. Continuing the unholy assassin quest line, we find Nesha, one of the murder victims, outside the Blushing Mermaid. Same technique here, darkness arrow, turn base, swap to my knife and stab you, obtaining her hand in the process. After our second kill there, Old Mage approached us and gave us a keen pass phrase to Candle Hollow. If you fail this check, you can just move the painting. Sikalius Uwe. I want to kill Dolly here, but it can kill you in one hit. I'm going to use the Elixir of Vigilance here for the plus five to initiative and I can't be surprised. But that counters his alert feint. We're also going to have the Ring of Reaction so it cannot be paralyzed. While I'm in the shadows, I'm going to put on the Shade Clinger armor and swap back. This gives me the Clinging Shadows condition, giving us advantage on saving throws. I also dropped my Time String and used my Glaive's Elemental Weapon ability on it. This time I'm going to go for Cold Damage because it answers me into the Thunder and Lightning Damage. I spit Trace here for the stealth bonus and long shiner. I wasn't taking any chances here, so I shot a few arrows at him at max range. We're only in battle with him, we're just going. Okay, so I spoke too soon there. I'm gonna fire an ice arrow, maybe a lightning arrow. Okay, we got a crit there, which is really good. You know what else is really good? Once we killed him, I'm gonna dash here and head towards the entrance. I'm just gonna exit and come back here. On Dollar's body is the Dollar Amaris. When you land a critical hit, it deals an additional 7 damage. But let me tell you, you don't have to use a knife, you can just use your bow. Trust me, this will skyrocket our damage. The Diff Knights accepted our hand as a gesture of goodwill. A grasping hand. Allowing us to talk to Sarah Vang, who was very satisfied that we murdered Korra and Nisha. Although he did give us one final task. 
<laughs> All right, let's go, gamers. Yo, one shot, hell yeah. Shutterhub became an unholy assassin, bathing in blood. She still looks pretty to me. The reason we completed this Chris Horn was for this trade arm. Our purchase has been the Ballas Armor, which gives us aura of meta. Enemies within two meters become vulnerable to piercing damage, unless they are resistant or immune to it. Our time strength does piercing damage. When enemies are vulnerable, they take double damage. There's a sweet spot with the aura of meta and using a bone where you're within two meters but don't gain disadvantage on attack rolls. Our next purchase was a crate of flesh glass. Whenever you score a critical hint, you'll an additional one to six force damage. Our final purchase was a second dollar maras. Seven damage on a crit hit and seven damage on a crit hit. The majority of our damage will be with critical hints and since we are an assassin we can guarantee them if we surprise the enemies. This pretty much is our end game build. So speaking of end game build, I'm gonna swap to the cloud giant Alexa. Yo, why is that neck so long? What the hell? As we entered Kazador's dungeon, I leveled up. From here you have two choices. We can either go cleric or fighter. I went fighter for the simplicity, picking defense for plus one to armor class. Okay, the entire reason we're here on is because the enemies are great for XP. For example, this lady is level one with 28 HP. She gave me 400 experience. Yeah, this is pretty much free XP. Okay, if you fail the check here and just like this Brazia. Okay, I want to show you this damage I can do. This enemy is surprised, so we're guaranteed a grant. With our Balish armor, we trigger Aura Meta. Affected entity is vulnerable to piercing damage. We did 102 damage of the bow. With the knives and crate of flesh glams, we did an extra 32 force damage. Yeah, this is going to get really crazy. That's a lot of enemies. So the little creatures there gave 210 XP, and the wolves gave 400, so that's so much XP. I'm going to oil of accuracy and great toad and biz for him. Let me know in the comments if you want me to update my stealth archer gun. Must have been the wind demo, right? No, seriously, I spent months perfecting it. We got rid of half his health before getting into combat. We have to kill him this turn, otherwise we're going to wind. Let's use an undead arrow on him. As the door was one hit from dying, and I can't afford to miss here, and I will die if I don't kill him. Hazardor's dead, and I'm going to invis here. You know what's an absolute vine? Arrows are many targets. So we're just gonna cut the enemies who fly here. So the bats will group together and we can smoke powder arrow them. There was just one enemy standing in between me and Kazador. Shadow Kitty ended his existence. She also ended the existence of many others. Don't forget to buy some arrows. La Relic and the snakes. Let's one shot him so he doesn't use his reaction. I'm gonna use the human slaying arrow here. Miss the 95%. Imagine casting magic. Can't be me. When we interact with the South East Wave button, we gain access to the vaults. The entire reason so we're arcane. here is for this scroll, the Artistry of Wall. I'm going to do a cheeky technique to make it do hundreds of damage at the end. Auntie Ifl was next. She called me Petal for the last time. The trick here is to use the Ilmata arrows, which stops the mushroom healing. As soon as the first mushroom went down, combat initiated. Honestly, I was kind of surprised that I had enough action economy to destroy all the mushrooms in just a single turn. Having only a bonus action left, I used an Invis Pot, which reset the encounter. Okay, I'm just gonna attack her now. I just one shot her, what the hell? I was expecting the hag to be a lot more difficult. Next one on the list is Oren. I use this particular sewer entrance to skip most of the sewer content. The encounter ahead has a pair of gloves we might need. I cast Greater in Biz so I can attack three unstoppable charges without getting spotted. I'm gonna fly up here and attack an enemy called Strangler Link. Once his unstoppable charges are gone, I can set up a kidnap with an improvised weapon and teleport, separating him from the ambush. A bind spike gloves. Your attacks ignore resistance to slashing, pissing, and bludgeoning damage. So here I'm gonna do the same thing, use an invis potion, and just bloody skip this barn, because it's like not worth it. 
This is a formal warning. Oren will wipe you if you underestimate Ern. I'm gonna use my technique for her, yeah? Basically, I'm gonna use a cow giant elixir for 27 strength. I also have the risky ring, which gives advantage on attack rolls. Athletics is also a plus 12, yeah? So if you haven't figured out what I'm gonna do, you're in for a trade, because I love it. I'm gonna potion of envies here and just bloody go for it, yeah? You only have one shot at this. So I'm just gonna walk up to her. I have a 95% chance to throw her. I'm gonna click on her and find a pixel over here. So when it says death, you're good to go. So let's frame. Okay, so she's dead and the Neverstone spawned here. Let me tell you, these enemies are not worth it because they'll stun you. So I'm just going to envious and fly away in. We escaped the Temple of Baal, but it was time for something more personal. Do you know why you are here? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Mother Superior unveiled her face to us. This lady is Viconia, the one Lady Shan requested that we purge, descending into the House of Grief. We confront Viconia. Give the artifact, and perhaps we will be merciful. Shadowheart chose not to hand over the artifact, and in doing so, gets labelled a traitor by Viconia in front of all of her followers. Unfortunately for her, Shadowheart displays the power Lady Shah blessed her with, proving that she is the rightful leader in Shah's dark justicia. Lady Shah's church does need to be cleansed of you. No, sweetie, it would be cleansed of you. The battle begins with the odds are very heavily stacked against Viconia. Shadowheart and her loyal Sharons slowly picked off the traitors one by one. Until it was just Viconia left. Go on Shadakiti, use that human slaying arrow and slay her. Before taking on Shao's final task, we went to the Night Orchid game, stumbling upon a name. I do not want to forget who I am. I like flowers. I like animals. My name is... This is actually so sad. Shudderheart approaches her parents, and then her hand suddenly starts searing with immense pain, signaling Lady Shah's entrance. She reveals that Shudderheart's parents are followers of Selene, and that their pain fills Shudderheart's power. The Mistress of the Night also restores Shudderheart's memory. Time to remember everything. Only to present her with a very dark request. Jennifer? Jen. Is that you? This request is to kill her own parents and snuff out the embers of her past life. It is done. Shut her heart. Obeyed Shah, sacrificing her own parents, surrendering the memories to the lady of Oz, becoming her chosen. Sorry, I'm going to need five minutes here. Polished disc looms before you. Shadowheart stands before the mirror. I picked the dark justicia option. Okay, so I burned through all my inspiration. Just to realise the other option, I didn't even need to roll a dice. We're going to pick the memory that increases our dexterity. Our dexterity is now 22. That is a plus six. I'm sorry, Bessie, you did. I'm lucky the explosion didn't do more damage. We reached level 11, getting your second level in fighter or action surge. Never done it with him before, so I'm just gonna throw an invis here. The door is unlocked and I put on the bone spike gloves, ready to take on the steel watcher titan. I just love the intro here, it's so cool. If I get close enough, will it have aura murder? Yep, okay. I had to get real close then. I'm gonna use my construct slaying arrows here. It only did 60 damage. I fired a few more arrows. Yeah, this damage is pretty mid. So I'm just getting envious here and fly away. My plan here was to trigger a surprise round and pick off the Steel Watchers, leaving the Titan for last. I used that surprise round and critted the enemy. Eventually, I got one low enough that it will blow up. Oh my god, he just tried to grapple me into the explosion. The Steel Watchers went down, and it was just me versus the Titan. You know what would have been an awesome Tim? Using an Ilmata arrow to stop it from healing. The battle was kind of boring. I would shoot some arrows and fly away to Kaina, making it waste its turn to get to me. Shadow Kitty, run! Don't blow up! God, I love blowing shit up.
Let's pay the devil's fee a visit, shall we? I put on my gloves of favoring and gave myself guidance. Let me tell you, you don't want to fill his pickpocket in after grabbing the ritual pound. We also grabbed a tonic on the way up to give to the thirsty one, disabling the trump. Okay, a little confession. I have over a thousand hours in this game and I haven't memorized the puzzle here. I'm going to put on the bone spike gloves just for these balls, right? Does anyone else hate these balls? I've pretty much got the gloves just for these enemies. Harlop was a massive pain. I didn't want him to have a turn because he'd cast charm on me and I missed the first one shot. Gotta hate that ethereal cramp, Chris. Sweetie, thank you so much for leaving this comment. If you intentionally trigger an attack of opportunity, this takes away his ethereal escape as a reaction. I might grab this amulet because Shadow Cute is pretty squishy. Okay, I'll go lethargic after this one, so I'm gonna infuse and run away. Okay, that really bloody hurt. I'm gonna try mind blast him here. Yo, 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 that was it. That's Raphael, Dan. It wasn't clean. Seravok was next. I don't recommend him solo because he will wreck you. That's okay. I'm going to take him on because I'm all about the game of bread. I'm going to all of Akrasheen and cast Greater Invis. Stealth Archer is perfectly balanced. Yo, we half healthed him, and I still have greater invis. What do you classify it as? A human, really? I guess I'll use the appropriate arrow. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That went way better than I expected. Gortash was next. I could have played it safe by signing with him, but where's the fun in that? I mean, I opened these doors, improvised weapon, and path towards a legio. Hello, Gortash. It's waiting. We're just gonna go on a little adventure. Oh dear dear, what happened dear? I didn't know what this was about, but editor everyone saw Invis went out. We opened up with a human slaying arrow, dealing 136 damage. The next arrow swept him off his feet. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one. We're going to action search you to commit. With Gortash being unalived, a greater challenge awaits. Look, can it be my bloody turn already? I was getting too impatient with the turn order, so I'll get out of there. Okay, so how close are we? Very close. Finally, we got level 12. We pick War Domain Clearing, allowing us to spend a War Priest Charge to make another attack using your bonus action. Since we leveled up, the traders restocked. I got an Invis Potion of Popper and bought some Aberration Slaying Arrows. It was time for the Big Bad Dragon and the craziest damage I've ever seen. I used the Lightning Arrow to unlock the passage and next I head down to the chess room. I just felt like doing that. But it's satisfying, you know? Okay, so the skip here is I'm gonna fail the chest three times. As soon as I fail the third one, I'm gonna potion it in viz. This forces the door to break, allowing you to skip all the trials. I set up for the answer fine by lifting the helmet and unlocking the passage for an escape round. Next, I triggered the cutscene and entered combat, only to miss your stem dash and leave the room. Okay, I'm gonna give myself shield of thrones here. I also cast guidance on myself, allowing me to use concentrated blast, which is a method for triggering the surprise round. I use an oil of accuracy and invis potion, which lets me set up for a concentrated blast. I ate his reaction, but also triggered the surprise round, giving me guaranteed friends utilizing the maximum potential of all of our gear. He also has the aura of murder, allowing us to double our piercing damage. I fired the first dragon slaying urn. Oh my god, that damage. We did 235. Another arrow was shot. 
healing 231 damage. God damn. Well, third attack was from being a war clearing. Answer took fine and started charging his Nova. If I don't kill him right now, my solar honor run would be over. We do have a Gloom Stalker attack left, so let's do that. That wasn't enough, so I'm gonna action surge here and fire another arrow. What have you done? If you didn't know, you can attack the Emperor and completely skip his yapping. Anyways, let's go to end game. Actually, before I leave the city. Shadowheart started rowing. We just needed to face the Elder Brain. Unfortunately, tragedy strong. Shadow Kitty, no! She looks so sad, I hate it. And she had to swim too. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. He is a very, very sneaky drink. If you go crouch here, the fight doesn't trigger and you can skip the entire morphic pool fight. The dice rolls here don't matter apart from the very last one. She's actually so cute. We got forced into a long rest, losing all of our bounce. Anyways, I'm gonna shoot the Emperor in the ass because I hate him. We are done. You thought that was gonna end the run, didn't you? Shadow Sweetie freed Orpheus and persuaded him to become a mind flayer. Look, it's Shadow Cute, alright? Not Shadow Squid. Regarding this decision, it didn't feel right making Shadow Heart a mind flayer, and it fit the theme of this run a bit better. Reaching in the upper city, I had a logistical issue. I only had one in this pot left. I really hope I don't miss here. Okay, that's a relief. We started running past the enemies. Oh my god, the reverb scared me. I'm gonna head through the door here, then go to the left here. A cutscene will trigger, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna fly over here and fly to the top here through the scum, triggering another cutscene. I selected Orpheus and made him drink an elixir of vigilance. I really need him to go fast. My strategy is quite simple. What I'm going to do is pass as many stacks of fierce perilous stakes as possible. Every single stack gives an additional 15 psychic damage. I'm going to cast it and again and again and again and again and again and I'm going to turn base it here, casting it another two times. Remember that scroll we got from the bombs? I also have six stacks of perilous stacks. You gotta see this. Okay, that did a lot of damage to the dragon. So the fused perilous stacks added 90 damage to every instance here. I'm just gonna spam these arrows. Cast greater in this. Oh my god, I just stunned him. Yo, check this out. Orpheus is going to miss his next turn. Whoopsie. Wait, he's not stunned? That's win. Okay, um, I'm surprised it hit everyone. Shadok, you can arrow me any day. I'm gonna move Orpheus closer. Going to try to at least. I didn't want to be grabbed by another tentacle, so I'm just gonna disengage and fly him. After Orpheus started channeling on the crown, we faced our biggest threat yet, the AI. No, not me, silly. The tentacle AI. Larian. No, Larian. You literally can't move. Like, what's it thinking about? The portal opened, and I sent Orpheus in by himself. I used him to cast magic missile, triggering the reaction of the Elder Brain. This way, Shatterheart is unaffected. Okay, we have one turn here. Potion of speed here. Okay, I'm gonna fly right next to the brain. Hey, the brain has aura of murder on it. So I'm gonna use the aberration arrows I've been buying. I did uh, 149 damage. I don't know how much damage that was, but I'm pretty close right now. Okay, let's send another one. That didn't get him, so I'm going to surge in. And we're going to finish the job with one last arrow. Shadow Kitty, um, what are you doing with that knife? There are many in the city and beyond who are in desperate need of Lady Shah's embrace. You shall help them, of course, and relish every moment of it. It's been a fun series. I really loved playing solo. So we spent 11 hours on it. So anyways, Shadaki's robe is so gorgeous. You know what else is gorgeous? Aside from Shadaki, what I'm trying to say is you are. Thank you for watching. And a personal thank you to all my lovely patrons. Shah's blessing upon you. She loves you. She must.